you know, like just mix the palette and just actually made textures from scratch. So that's really cool. That is really cool. Yeah, I know some of the green and like the aquamarine and other weird uh, colors and such. But all right, guys, <laughs> here we are in game number two on Andromeda, one of the newer maps of Starbo. This is the semifinals. The winner of this goes on to fight against Deathblood in the grand finals. So without further ado, spawning in the lower right corner of the map, the purple Terran player, Nazdi. And currently up 1-0 in the top right corner of Andromeda, we have the blue Protoss player, RSVP. Former complexity gamer, isn't he? I, think. Uh, I don't actually know off the top of my head. I, I, think, I think he is. And he talked about that when, when, I, when he was my guest of honor on my show. So. <laughs> Woo! I had to plug that as much as possible. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, is it? I mean, to an extent, like, is it worth bragging about a team that you're no longer on? Like, <laughs> no, like, I was. I, was I more used to be good guys. Show more than plugging about his team. Another, oh, another okay. interesting, another interesting thing is never play this map with hybrid settings on, because the custom textures make everything go crazy. There's a, a small vod I should post that in the. Oh, I don't think you can post li uh, links in your chat, but there's a. It's called Starbo well, Rave. you can if you so, sell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> uh, well, actually, one thing worth noting, guys. Well, this looks like there's an in-base expansion here. There is no gas on this one, so it's it's not as uh, effective to take this base, but it's really really safe to have this in-base expansion, which is kind of cool. Another thing to notice that I didn't really notice until they were making this map is that the distance from natural to natural entrance is super tiny in this map. Like it's the same in Bird War 2. I just never noticed how short rush distance. Well, you have a really long rush distance from your main to your natural, though, and then quite short from natural to natural compared to other maps. Then I guess that's why, or else it would have been a huge map. Sorry, I just talk about maps all the time. I, I do make a lot of maps, and I'm very interested in maps, so... No, that's cool. Like, we need more people who are passionate about maps, because, let's be honest, that's one of the biggest problems with StarCraft 2 right now, with the map selection. That's why I see this big dynamic change as Season 2 comes out for 2014. I, I saw a little bit on the map pool. Like I'm, I'm so out of the heart of the storm loop, though. But I saw the the new map pool, and it, it seemed like yeah, it was better that blink stalkers were not going to be as prominent in those maps. So I guess that's good. Well, that's, Even though that's I kind of the thing about really Starcraft no that I really like too, where you, the map design isn't as limited as regular Starcraft map design is. Like we talked a little bit about that before you came on to me in Zombie Grub, where, well, you know, sentries are like the one reason you can't have these cool chokes like you do in Starbo. True. It's not limited in that way, but it's limited in a lot of other ways. Like, uh, since there's so much like space control in Starbo, you really need to have like certain chokes on certain bases. You can't have this huge, super open bases that you can have in StarCraft 2. But hold that thought, RSVP is proxying robotics facility, and I think you will finally get to see your Reavers. I, I think a lot of the reason he's doing this is because he's up at the moment too. Because what he's doing, like anytime you proxy anything, it's always a risk, right? Now, whether it's a risk that ends the game or not, it's what you have to measure whether it's worthwhile. But what he's planning to do here, guys, is build Reavers out of this, get the Warp Prism, and just shuttle these down into his opponent's uh, mineral lines. And I like the fact that he's going to be faking Dragoon pressure, too. Like, that's what makes this really cool. The Singularity Charge, the Bunker. I mean, Nazi's going to be focused on the front of his base, and the last thing he's going to be thinking about doing is getting a Siege Tank in his mineral line, much less a Missile Turret. I'm very curious if he's going to put the Reaver tech at the proxy or in his base, because in his base he's going to keep it alive for longer, but he runs the risk of getting it scanned, so it's going to be an interesting choice. Nope, at the proxy. Alright, so the Robo Bay, I kind of wish he would have done in his main instead of the proxy. A big part of this is because, again, if this gets picked off later, then you don't have the option to build it, like, say, 20 minutes of the game. But on the other hand, Reavers are so rarely utilized in the late game. like. I really feel that they're kind of almost like oracles to that extent, where they're used more for harass than for like a real army fight. They can be very useful in late game, especially in PvP, and it's gonna be very interesting to watch. Also, he's saving up a lot of Chrono Boost on his Nexus, and I think that's intentional to churn out that Reaver. Oh, and yep. churn up the Singularity Charge. So, I mean, again, the big thing about the Singularity Charge is like, the Marines without Barrel Stabilizers, guys, they've been neutered in Starbo. They've only got range of four. Even with a range of five, they still don't match the Dragoons unless they're in the bunker. So it's really critical. Uh oh, hang on. Where did you just scan? Scans the main. Misses everything, actually. Sees no expansion, though. That's kind of key. It's that like, is, and he kind of, I like his, actually like his scan because he scans kind of the natural and the main at the same time, even though it missed well, the pool a little bit. It will also scans the in-base natural, what? too, at that other one. So he scans <laughs> effectively three bases with one scan. But he the point is, like... Dragoon, too. Sorry for cutting off there. He's actually bringing the Dragoon. That's really interesting. Well, I'm, 
Yeah, Lizzo okay, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's just a soak a hit or two if that's gonna be the case. I mean, we'll see how it gets utilized here. The Reaver does get out. Marines don't stand a chance, and this thing just does so much splash damage, guys. SCV is getting annihilated here. Marines coming out of the bunker. Actually, oh, <laughs> they run into that scarab. Big hit goes off. Oh, this is so dead. So unfortunate for N N Nasdi because he's actually going for a bio build, and RCP is going for the oh. unit that counters bio the best. And that's just incredibly unfortunate. It's so cool to see bio He's being utilized move, so actually I like, versus Protoss. I like these focus on the warp prism. That's how you shut this down, guys. The Reaver is always going to get picked up and it's always going to be dealt with, but Nazdi holds. He takes some pretty heavy losses, but not devastatingly so. Eight SCVs is not the end of the game by any means. He's even, In fact, he's still leading in workers at the moment. A big part of this is because RSVP didn't take that natural base. Like, I think the alternative to this, instead of applying the fake Dragoon pressure at the front, is to instead of investing the dragoons instead of investing in say the singularity charge take this nexus but because he didn't he sacrificed a lot and got very little in return but he's not done yet he's making another war prism he's gonna go back with a reaver i mean this guy shut down once but doesn't mean it's the end of it and let's not forget we just saw how much that scarab annihilated the marines well this clumped army moving across the map is not gonna be much better off Oh, if those marines discover the proxy, this game is over though, because if you can just spread him out a little bit, he should be able to pick that up easily, but uh, RCP is going to need to bring that reaver home to defend versus this bio push from Nazdi. This is a very interesting turnaround of this game. He should be able to defend though, I mean, this is, it's it's just marines versus a reaver. If they yeah, had... if you can get it. There we go, Nazdi is up. So he's, right. oh, okay, so Nasty's gonna actually focus on the natural, so that he's gonna be able to put the reaver on the high ground, but he might lose his natural base though. It's gonna go down for sure. Oh, I think no! Wow, that <laughs> one marine just pulling out ahead in times. So it actually was gonna be I'm a not, huge scare pit there, but didn't I'm happen. not sure if that was micro or if he was actually using that just to scout up the ramp. I think he was just stimming that forward to scout up the ramp. <laughs> That was probably just a very lucky marine. Well, unlucky oh, marine. Oh, but, but these ones are not. Oh my god! Monster kill. That's why you make reavers to defend versus bio. Yeah, he's just absolutely wrecking the bio with each of these shots, guys. I mean, you cannot make Colossus and Starbo. This is effectively the unit that the Colossus has replaced that they brought back. And as we see, it's doing a great job of dealing with Marines. But the problem is the Reaver's very limited. It relies so heavily on the War Prism because its movement speed is, like, the slowest thing I've ever seen in my life. You can, like, the Overlord has a fun time outrunning the Reaver, so yeah. Um, what, oh, where did he go for the War Prism speed? I didn't even catch that. He's got the Gravitic Drive, so this War Prism's moving like it's on crack. The problem is, nice. I don't like this. This is one almost dead war prism carrying two reavers. This is the most expensive cargo ever. Ooh, and it's not gonna. Oh, you don't want to go in there too closely. Oh, he has to be so careful. Oh also, I'm there's, having no, <laughs> there's no marauders coming out of Nazdi. He really needs marauders now to deal with Ragoon's reavers. You can't just go marine only. Oh, that was a nice micro though. Yeah, so you guys kind of heard me in the previous game brush off Marauders, kind of call them garbage, but the reality is the one thing they do well is they soak hits. Unfortunately, as we see, Marines, they don't really soak hits, and they're going down like crazy. Medics are trying their best, but like, why, God, why? I'm feeling I'm watching like a giant step on ants, like here when I see the Reavers shooting down on the Marines there, there's like so little they can do. I mean, Nazi, I love the way he cleaned this up the first time. The intelligence of actually targeting the World Prism first was huge. Oh god, these SCVs are screwed. Uh, oh wow, he actually picks off the Reavers. Well, picks up the Reavers, I guess. Yeah, as you say, these are hardly picked off. Uh, SCVs <laughs> pulled though in full, chasing down these Dragoons. If I was Nazdi, I would just be punching my keyboard right now. If he had a star portal, like it's on the way now, but he doesn't have the Viking. If he had been able to deal with his Warp Prism any sooner, this damage would not have been nearly as severe. But as we pointed out before, this is the advantage of the proxy. It's a bit of a gamble, because if, you, if your opponent finds it, you're screwed. But because he never did, he was never able to prepare properly for this. And Nazdi had that really sick scan too. If this had been done in base, I guarantee you the starport would have been done long ago. We would have already had a Viking out, but man, you have point, to have to applaud RZP's micro. He's been keeping those reavers alive for forever with everything he's down on red. Finally losing a reaver there. Honestly, I, I know I should applaud his my RZP's micro. I'm applauding Nas. He's he's taking losses left and right, but he's still in this game. He's got the same workers as his opponent. He's got more workers than his opponent, and with the high ground advantage, the dragoons can't push up. So the workers was so low. Like, honestly, I, I, at this point, I'm just like, dude, make a new work for some, please. So you can actually go into your opponent's base. <laughs> oh, he actually has. Uh, and uh, he's actually switching work prisms now. He's listening to you here. And yeah. man, he's and he's holding this off without a single Marauder, which is just incredible as well. But I don't think it's going to last for too long, to be honest, though. Right, but this is where the problem comes in, too. We got the Scarab damage increase coming out, guys. It makes the Scarabs hit for even more, which means Marauders become less relevant. <laughs> 
Because the key thing before is like the Marauders, they soak the hits. Oh, lands the out. That's a, a gifted orbital. I don't know. <laughs> yes, that was the great blind counter. Okay, so there we have it. RSVP going to the finals wow. to play versus Death Blonde.